What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. First off, I want to just mention, if you guys want to submit your videos, please submit them to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Um, we prefer landscape, right? Yeah. Landscape-oriented videos. Please send in multiple reps, and please send in videos of, let's say, 75 to 95%, so we can take a good look at your technique over a number of reps with a heavy enough weight that we maybe start to see some technique breakdown. That getting out of the way, we're gonna get first off into a video from Bartek. Now, Bartek was lucky enough to have two videos in our last Form Check Friday, and the second one was critiqued by you guys. Now, you guys did a fantastic job of critiquing this video, so we're gonna take a look at it now. So, if we watch Bartek's squat here, we can see that I think the biggest issues, and this was pointed out by most people, are that he loosens up a little bit into the bottom and has to regain positioning out of the hole. Um, that we're maybe a little bit too narrow in the stance, and that's those are probably the two biggest faults. So what ideally we'd like to see is at the bottom here, if we can get his feet a little more in line, oh, in line, with his knees, his knees are actually tracking quite a bit outside of uh, his feet. So if we could get his feet just a little bit wider, I think that's gonna allow him to stack joints just a little bit better. And as well, as you can see, when he comes out of the bottom of his squat, we're actually getting quite a bit of looseness right here in the lumbar spine and the upper back. We're starting to see those shoulders track a little bit out of position and he's having to make up ground, regaining position out of the bottom. So if we can get you to stay a little bit tighter into the bottom, I think that's also going to be helped by a wider stance. You're not necessarily gonna run your quads into your torso quite as much. If you can get things out of the way, you probably sit a little bit more in between the heels and avoid some of those issues. Um, yeah, so basically, you guys in the comments nailed it. Great job, and Bartek, if you want a very, very detailed way, or uh, sorry, some very detailed and constructive critiques of your lift, just scroll through our last video's comments because everybody gave very good, very constructive advice. Thank you very much. So our next video comes from Zach Gehring. Now, Zach is doing some squats here, so we're just gonna take a quick look through his squats. Sets up. Now, Zach said that one of the biggest things limiting his squat is his shoulder mobility. He says these look pretty high bar, but he has a tough time getting the bar any further down his back. And as we can see there, gets a little bit pulled forward out of the bottom of each squat. A little bit out of the bottom. And I think part of that is because of where the bar is on his back. So because he's got a fairly low bar style squat and a fairly high bar bar position, let's scroll back the other way here. Fairly high bar bar position, you can see it kind of pulls him forward out of the bottom of the squat each time. So what I would recommend is honestly, and you probably already know this because you mentioned it in your video, but I would work on trying to work on your bar position, on your shoulder mobility, and on your grip placement because I think that's the biggest limiting thing. Your lower body looks like it's doing a lot of really good things um, and it looks like simply by having that bar further up the back, that's probably the biggest thing pulling you forward out of the bottom. So if we can, not even necessarily move the bar further down, but work on tightening up that upper back, pinning those shoulder blades back, pulling the bar into your back and getting the lats and everything to just hold a bit of a better position. I think that's gonna go a long ways for you. We can see here, right as you come up out of the hole, squats, hits the bottom, and we can see that bar just start to roll ever so slightly. And we see the back start to give out just a little bit forward. We start to see those shoulder blades, especially on that third rep there. We scroll back here. Right there, we start to see that bar pull you forward. And that's just because the upper back is having a hard time staying tight. So if we can work on that upper back, uh, honestly, just some basic pec stretching. Spend a bunch of time during your squat warm-ups working your way in and under the bar, playing with different grip widths, and opening those shoulders up specifically how you would to be under a squat. Honestly, go in on your off days, take your grip on the bar, get yourself under the bar whilst in, in a squat position, and just hold it there. 
Just hold it there and work your way maybe a little bit narrower, work your way into getting a little bit tighter over time. That's gonna be the best way to work with shoulder mobility, specifically for squatting, is by putting yourself in a squatting position. So our next video today comes from Josh Malba. Now Josh here is doing some bench press uh, and honestly, I think one of the only issues, one of maybe two small issues, number one is the unrack. And honestly, Josh, I don't think there's too, too much you can do about this. Given the rack that you're benching out of, you're having to really pop your shoulders forward. And if I just rewind, oops, sorry, if I just rewind a tiny bit here, you can see as you, damn it. Sorry, we're still getting used to this uh, new app that we're using to try to display the videos. We took you guys' criticism. We're trying to create a way where we can use this cool sort of in the gym TV aesthetic, but also use an app to record my voice as well as allow me to scroll through the videos and draw stuff on it. So it's gonna take a little while for me to get good at this. So you'll have to bear with us while we try to figure this out and see if this is the direction we're gonna wanna take things. But anyways, if we see Josh's bench right here, as he unracks, the shoulders are having a pop pretty far forward, you can see they lift right there as he comes out of the unrack. And that forces him to have to re-tuck his shoulders and get everything reset once he gets out of, uh, the, un, out, of the, out of the rack. Now, the bench press itself looks really good. The only thing I think is on a couple of reps, like that one right there, as he comes up off the chest, the bar just isn't coming back early enough. So you can see the bar goes straight up and then starts to track back. So touch, up and then back, as opposed to some of his other reps where he does a better job of bringing the bar back a little bit earlier. So if we can get that bar path a little bit more consistent off the chest, that rep as well was a little bit up and then back. And I believe this fourth rep here does a better job of bringing it back and then up. So a little bit of an inconsistency with the timing of when you're flaring and bringing that bar back. But honestly, overall, very good bench press. And I'm not sure there's much you can do out of the rack. Uh, I noticed you got a guy giving you a hand off there. So that probably helps you as well. All in all, Eric, like I said, solid bench. Let's work on, uh, I don't know, is there another bench in the gym that you can use uh, to get a bit of a better unrack? Maybe. Uh, and as well, maybe some incline pressing to help you work on the consistency of that bar path. That's something that I've found very beneficial because if you mess up your bar path on an incline bench, you really pay for it. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Our next video here comes from Lawrence. Lawrence is doing some sumo deadlifts and he says that his toughest or his, or his biggest issue with deadlifts is his starting position. He finds that no matter whether he pulls sumo or conventional, he finds himself getting pulled forward off the floor as he initiates the lift and finds his start position a little bit inconsistent. Uh, Lawrence is a competing power lifter from BC and let's take a look at his sumo deadlift. So I'm gonna play that through one more time here. Now, if we take a look at it, your starting position there, a little bit in front of the bar. So I think if we can get those shoulder blades sunk down just a little bit more, not even necessarily change your torso angle or change much of what you're doing other than just pulling those shoulder blades down your back, I think that's gonna fix that. Now, if we watch the rest of the video here, we'll see that one, you get pulled forward a little bit. This next rep, oh, which way am I going here? All right. So the next rep, a little bit less pulled forward. The next rep, a little bit pulled forward. And I believe the fourth was your best rep of them all. The lats, you can see the shoulder blades set much better in this rep. The shoulder blade position here, very stacked. We're in a generally good straight line up and down from the bar. It's a little bit distorted from the fisheye lens. I, I believe this is a GoPro here. But if we look back at the start position here, we're in a fairly, uh, in, in a much more rounded position in the upper back, and that's just due to your shoulder blade positioning. So now if we scroll forward to our fourth rep here, you can see that angle is much, much different. So let me just, let, let's, let's try something really crazy here. See if we can get this set like that. Now that's gonna be the angle on that one. And if we go back to the first rep, we can see that we're 
pretty far off of that angle in the first rep. But when we start our fourth rep, we're much closer to a more relatively neutral spine. So I believe that shoulder blade positioning is the key there. So making sure that we're consistent with turning those lats on, making sure that the shoulder blades are kind of tucked down the torso and that your starting position is consistent each and every time. I don't think that it's a matter of needing to sit back further or anything like that. I think it's as simple as maybe getting a little bit more external rotation. Tucking the elbows is a cue that I've found pretty useful for a lot of lifters and just making sure that you're able to keep everything locked in on each and every rep. Overall though, I would say that it's a pretty small detail, but something that's probably gonna make a pretty big difference in the long run. So hopefully that helps you, man. All right guys, our next video here comes from Robbie. Now Robbie's working his way up to a 500 pound deadlift. I believe he's somewhere in the mid fours right now. So let's take a look at his deadlift. Now he gave me a very detailed breakdown of his setup. Sounds like he's focusing on and doing a lot of the right things. Let's see if we can notice anything going even just slightly wrong throughout these pulls here. So there's one thing I noticed right off the bat. We'll let it run, run through the set here. Second rep was a little bit better. Third rep was okay. All right, so Robbie, first and foremost, especially this first rep here, buddy, we are starting out in front of the bar. So good setup, good tightness, good pulling yourself in. But from this position, what we need to do is we need to get you to sit back and down a little bit so we can change this angle to more like this uh, and get the back angle a little more there so you can use your quads a little bit better what it looks like right now is because we're at such a high hip angle we're getting a pretty stiff legged deadlift as opposed to getting the pull starting with knee extension now this second rep is actually a little bit better you do a better bit of bit better blah, 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 a bit of better job uh, of getting back on the heels, but we're still a little too far back and not using quite enough quad to really push the bar off the floor and maintain your torso position. So we're seeing the hips start to creep up as you initiate the pull. Hips creeping up, hips creeping up, and the hip angle is changing right as you come up off the floor. As opposed to staying static throughout the pull. So the biggest thing we need to get you to do is we need to get you to shift your weight back on your heels. We need to get you to try to pull your chest up just a little bit. And we need you to try to sit your butt down just a little bit. So that way we can use the quads a little more efficiently and try to push the bar off the floor instead of getting into this sort of stiff legged position. All right, our next video submission comes from Thomas. Now Thomas is doing some squats and we'll just take a look here and see what we see. So a couple things I noticed right away. Number one is that Thomas is doing a bit of a shoulder shrug before initiating the squat and the shoulders aren't coming down at all. Now this is something that I think is, first off, not super productive uh, even if the shoulders then sink into place before the squat. But in your case, Thomas, we're still, the shoulders are still staying up as we initiate the squat. If you watch the shoulders go up, and they kind of just stay up, and then you squat. So the biggest thing that I would start with is trying to lock those shoulder blades down your back, uh, using the lats a little bit better, maybe tucking the elbows, let me just clear that, maybe tucking the elbows in under the bar just a little bit more to help you get that upper back engaged and working a little bit better uh, throughout your squat. The next thing is, we're going down in a little bit of a, a flexed pattern and you can see as he comes up to the top, we're getting back into some extension here. So as you initiate the squat, we're in flexion. And as you come up out of the squat, we're in extension. Now, ideally we don't wanna see that much spinal movement throughout the squat. So what I would like for you to do is work on your bracing. We want, we want a slight extension in the lumbar spine and a very slight flexion in the upper back or the uh, thoracic spine. So ribs down in front, slight extension in the low back and try to make and maintain that position both on the descent 
and the ascent of your squat. The next thing I'm noticing here is we're getting a little bit of collapse in the arches. I think the stance might be just a little bit too wide. So I would like for you to bring that stance a little bit closer. As you can see at the bottom, we're getting what looks like a little bit of valgus knee crash here. Uh, now Thomas has mentioned that his, his low back gets a little bit fried after squatting. And I think a couple of these things are gonna be contributing. So number one, let's get that upper back working a little bit better. Let's try to get the lats locked in, those elbows pulled into the sides, maybe even tucked in under the bar a little bit better. Let's try to maintain a little bit of extension, that low back throughout the movement. And let's bring that stance a little bit narrower. I think that's gonna clean up a whole bunch of different things for you. So good luck with that, Thomas. All right, guys, now it's time to leave the user feedback or uh, the, the viewer feedback, whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna put uh, dead, some deadlifts here from Ryan Deck. Now Ryan's pulling from bands. This is from a front view. We're gonna let this play through. And then afterwards, we're gonna play you guys a side view of I think one of the same sets from that day. But let's just make our way through. Let us know what you guys see in the comments. And Ryan, I'm gonna get to your video first thing in our next Form Check Friday. This is the side view now, and we're gonna let that play us out. <laughs> 